Welcome to my channel, Freckled Mom. I'm Devin. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, hey! Today I'm sharing a few DIYs using Plaid products. It's a collaboration and there's a giveaway. I'll explain that in a minute, but let's get right into the DIYs. This first DIY, I'm gonna show you how to use Plaid's Waverly Agave to transform a Dollar Tree item. I had shared this video previously and I'm gonna show you a shorter version. The full video will be in my description. So you can also see that I have some flowers that match that Waverly paint from Michaels and I love those flowers. So here I just took everything apart and I roughed up the edges a little bit just so the paint would adhere better. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna give it a really good wiping before I paint. And I'm painting this in Agave. This is from Waverly. This is a plaid product. I love this color. I think it is super pretty and works well with any style. And I do the same for the whole word home. This I had taken off previously before painting everything so I could do it separately. Do give it two coats. Here I'm painting the back piece in a Nod Plaid product, Art Minds, Smoked Pearl. And then I'm making the back wall with some popsicle sticks. You can watch the full version in the link I shared. But I hot glue large popsicle sticks cut in half to a smaller popsicle stick to make it look like shiplap. And I painted this in another plaid color, Art Minds Oyster. Now it's time to start assembling and these are those boards that I had to make for shiplap. I start in the middle first and I hot glue them down. And then I go through and I add them one above on the bottom and one on the top. And I do think it looks shiplap. It's not exactly perfect, but I think it goes with the style. I think it's super cute. And you can see those flowers there on the side. They match so well. Everything is just super adorable. I'm gonna go through and put hot glue on the back of that home sign, and I'm just gonna put it right down on top of that fake ship lap. And then I was gonna use more flowers, but I thought I would just go simple and just do one, and I found this one that had a little bit of the gold in it. I thought it would look really nice, and I put it right into the O, and it is so sweet. I am totally in love with this. And now I just put it all back together. And can you believe this for a Dollar Tree item? My goodness, $1 and now it looks so high end. I mean, at least to me it does. Let me know what you think down in the comments. This is a collaboration with other Plaid ambassadors like myself. Plaid ships us new products to try out for tutorials, for videos, or classes. Plaid has many different brands, Apple Barrel, Delta Creative, Waverly. They do more than just paint, and I'll show you a few examples today. We love Plaid so much we wanted to give you some. $100 worth of Plaid craft products. To enter, watch, like, and comment using the code word on all the videos in the playlist, so you'll need to listen. The giveaway will end at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on June 15th. The winner will be announced on our community tabs on June 16th. The winner will have 48 hours to reach out to Indy Annie Jones. Her email is below. Here's another way to use Plaid products with Mod Podge. So I have a stool that I had gotten from my sister and I painted it already in a non-plaid product, linen white chalk paint. And this again is a shorter version. You can watch the full version, but here I am using my Tim Holtz paper. You guys know how much I love my Tim Holtz paper. And so I'm just cutting it up and there are three designs that come in one shipment when you buy this from Tim Holtz and you can get these right on Amazon. I have the link for you down in my description, but I just cut out a whole bunch of them. So here is the leg I had previously painted and I'm giving it a generous covering of Mod Podge. And then I lay the paper right on top of it and I smooth it out with my fingers. 
and then you just kind of go around and smooth it out add some mod podge smooth it out there's really no messing this up although the paper is sort of thin so if you do put too much mod podge it will rip so you just have to be careful no heavy fingers on this lightly pushing everything down to clear up the wrinkles in this and sometimes I leave the wrinkles because I think it adds that vintage little extra touch to it. I think this is so sweet though. And like I said, there are so many different designs. This one, when I ordered it, did come with three different designs. So there's a lot that comes in it and I definitely think it's worth the money. And I don't even think it was that expensive. I wanna say it was about $25, but like I said, you get so many pieces. It's pretty amazing. And you guys have seen me do this so often because I love it so much. And you're gonna see that I haven't done the upholstery yet. I do do it in the full video here. It's already done. And this is just my husband adding the little decorative upholstery tacks. I think it's super sweet and adds just that little extra vintage flair to it. I love this so much. In the Mod Podge, I put on the outside as well as underneath the paper and that just keeps it safe and makes it durable so it can go outside. How adorable is this? As I said before, Plaid does more than just paint. They also have tutorials on their website and other products for home decor, decoupage, stenciling, fashion crafting, glass painting, and needle crafting. So definitely head over to their website, plaidonline.com, and check out what they offer. Everything I'm using today is also down in my description. Plaid can be bought on Amazon and Walmart too. Plaid has a variety of colors as well. I had made this for a customer over at my father-in-law's garage with the help of my husband and my father-in-law. So here's just a short version of what we did that day to build a peg leash holder. You guys know me and power tools and hammers. It's a little scary. So the boys did a lot of the work, but I definitely learned a lot and I did get my hands in there. So once we got home, I just cleaned it up a little bit more and made sure that it was ready to paint. I did paint this in a non-plaid color and it's a blue that I love using and it's for a wall, so you'll see that after. Here I just went to my Cameo and I printed out a stencil. So the dog's name is Mitzi, super cute, and the customer wanted this to be playful. So I had printed out a bunch of paws and a bunch of bones to make it playful. He also picked out the colors. So you'll see here, and I did use all plaid. This Mitzi though, I did use a non-plaid color, which you'll see but I'm just laying everything out. You guys know me, I love to measure and I'd rather measure like 10 times than mess up my placement. So I'm just laying everything down and it was a little bit of just trial and error where I thought it looked cute. I didn't wanna overload this, but I still wanted it to have that playful look that the customer wanted. And I think this is super cute and I not colors I normally would pick, and but I really like them after I got them. So I'm going through with my color of the board first and this just minimizes bleed through and so many people do this and I just think this is a, one of the best ways so that way you don't have as much bleed through. And now I'm gonna go through with my non-plaid color and again, this is that Art Mines and Oyster. I really love this color, sorry plaid, but I do. <laughs> and these little paw prints they are going to get a folk art classic green and I do two coats of everything so there's a good coverage on it and then my bones I'm going to go in with my folk art in daffodil yellow and I love this color and it's so pretty and I'm just peeling everything off and you can see there's no bleed through everything looks amazing and you can see the green and the yellow so well on that blue board this is so nice, I love this. The customer loves it, it is just so sweet and it's just adorable. And again, I am so happy with the Plaid products. I think they just have great coverage and such a variety of colors to choose from. If 
you're new to my channel or coming over from another channel, welcome. We do a lot of Dollar Tree crafts, DIY, gifts and decor, thrift flipping, and more. If you like these kind of videos, please consider subscribing. To all my returning friends and subscribers, thank you. Don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. You can also find me on Instagram as Freckled Mom. Now I'm gonna show you antique wax distressing on metal. So this is a project I had done previously. I have a metal tray I had gotten from a thrift store. And right here I'm painting this wooden block from the dollar store in folk art seashell pink. I got some words off of my cameo and I had already painted the metal tray in a non-plaid color chalk paint linen white. It's not shown, but it's in the previous video. And I just think this is so sweet. You're gonna see. And this is just a little bit of E6000 and some hot glue so I can put that board right onto the metal and it'll have a good hold. And now I'm going through with my antique wax and a larger chip brush and I'm just giving it a little distressed look on the wood first. And I blot it off so there's not too much and it's definitely a dry brush. And then I go through with a different size brush just to get a little bit more heavy on the corners. And now I'm going right through onto the metal and this is the painted metal. So wherever I feel like it was a little heavy, I just went through with a baby wipe and wiped it off. And there is so much detail on this and that's definitely why I picked this tray out. I love the detail. I don't know how well you can see that here, but there's some flowers on the corners and I just think it's super sweet and very easy to make it look distressed. I was hoping to get that, you know, old vintage metal tray look and I definitely think I did it. And now I'm just going through over the entire tray and just giving it a good distressing over everything. And now I have some flowers here and I have a mix of flowers. I have some little herbs here or just some greenery from Michaels and then I have some baby's breath from Walmart and then the roses are from the Dollar Tree so I think a little bit from every store really adds to the look of it and I'm just gonna hot glue everything down where I think it looks nice now I think even when you use a whole bouquet of Dollar Tree I think it looks fine but sometimes you just want it to look you know a little more upscale and I think just mixing in the different items from the different stores really does that. So you'll see as we go, but you let me know in the comments what you think. But this is again, just some baby's breath. I had cut off of a bouquet from Walmart. And I'm just laying it down. I had laid everything out previously a bunch of different ways. I took a bunch of pictures to see which way I liked better. And now I'm just going to go through and hot glue everything down where I think it looks nice. And really there's no set way when you're doing a floral arrangement. I think you just need to keep doing it and moving it until it's pleasing to your eye. And here I'm just hot gluing the flowers into the leaves. That way I have more security when I'm gluing it down and nothing will fall out or fall off the tray. And I just love these colors together, this peach and this cream. I think it's so sweet and it definitely goes with that vintage feel that I was trying to go for. You guys know me and Shabby Chic. I say I don't like it, but I'm always drawn to it. And I just think this is so pretty. And I don't think I used too many flowers on this. I felt like maybe it was too many, but you know what? Go big or go home, right? I just think this is so cute. This literally is probably one of my favorite pieces I've ever made. The colors, the distressing, the vintage, the different fabrics and metal. How sweet is that? Oh my goodness. Don't forget the full version of this is down in my description. You'll find all the links down there. This project, I am showing you how to add some finishing touches with ink and antique wax. So I have a thrifted picture frame. That's my code word, thrifted. I'm taking all the pieces out and I painted it in a non-plaid color again. 
but I'm going through now with another baby wipe and my antique wax and sometimes when I was using the baby wipe I was pushing a little too hard and some of that linen white I had painted it in peeled up and I actually thought that was perfect it was a happy little accident because it added to the distress so I'm just going through with my baby wipe on the entire frame all over it and whenever I peel up a little bit of paint when I'm a little too um, trigger happy over here it's okay and you can see it's already starting to look distressed and I really like this I wasn't really going for an exact style except it was like I guess rustic I'm not even sure the name of it you guys let me know when I'm done what you think it looks like I'm gonna say rustic so here I have my ink and this is another plaid product in Waverly and I'm just gonna dry brush it and so I put a little bit on my brush and I blot out a lot so it's not too heavy and I just go through and I start lightly dry brushing and you're gonna see I do get a little happy again I go a little heavy in a few spots and I really loved how it came out so whenever I went heavy in a certain spot I would go a little heavier on purpose and I think it was giving it like a distress my husband said like a metal look and I think that is a perfect description it just looks like some kind of distress distress rustic metal and I think it's super cute and I do feel like a few spots I might have gone a little too happy but I think it really adds to the piece and it's definitely not something I do all the time but I really love it it's something I just wanted to be creative with and that's what I love about these plaid paints is that they're just so versatile. You can do so much with it. And you can see there, that's where I'm starting to get a little heavy and I have my gloves on just in case. And I really do love this. I think it's so cute. And I think it looks like something you'd find in a store, you know, something you find on Wayfair. And I am just totally in love with this. I've moved it from a couple different rooms. I haven't figured out where I really want it to live forever. It's in my dining room now and I just think it's super sweet. So I cleaned out the glass and I'm putting everything back now. I had gone to CVS and I printed out a bunch of family pictures and I did them in black and white so it would look really nice with that distressing. And I'm just cleaning everything up really good, making sure it's dry. And I'm laying all the pictures out which way I can fit them in and I did make a little mistake and one of the pictures I printed the wrong way so I have an extra spot there and you'll see what I do I'm gonna close all these up and get it ready I have this scrapbook paper here and I think this color is really nice I'm gonna make something for that little spot and I have these Dollar Tree stickers, they're like 3D, and I just picked one I thought was sweet, thankful, and I put it right onto the paper and popped it in the spot, and that was it. How sweet is this? Oh my goodness, I love this. I love the pictures, I love the frame, I love the black and white, I love everything about this. It is so adorable. Let me know down in the comments what you think this style is. That's it for my plaid ideas today. As you can see, plaid has tons of products and so many ideas for crafting. You can transform Dollar Tree pieces or thrifted items into beautiful pieces of art using plaid products. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider it. When you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I post a new video. Don't forget, this was a playlist and there's a giveaway. All the information is down in my description if you missed it. Don't forget to comment your code word thrifted for the giveaway. As always, let me know what your favorite DIY was. Check out my community tab for my next live. Another way to support my channel is buymeacoffee.com. You can look for me on Instagram as freckledmom. Thank you for watching and have a great day.